Welcome to Electron Online. Now let's look at the next four connections that we will run into in various situations. Here we have what we call a cable supporting a beam and the force acting on the cable or I should say the force acting on the beam because of the cable is, has to be in the same direction as the cable so therefore the force must act in this direction. Regardless of what is happening to this beam, this cable will support the beam in this direction. Typically where the cable is, the direction the cable will adjust itself to for the particular situation, but whenever it becomes in equilibrium, in other words, there's no longer any motion, the cable will pull in this particular direction. Same with a short link. A short link acts just like a cable. And so therefore, again, supporting this beam will be in the direction of the short link. So the force acting beam will be also in this direction. So might as well put a force symbol there. All right. Now we have these interesting situations where we have either a frictionless collar or sleeve and here we have a pin inside a frictionless slot. Whenever we use the word frictionless, that means the forces must act perpendicular to the surface it comes in contact with. So in this particular case, this beam right here, which is connected to the sleeve, will be supported in such a way that the force is perpendicular to the frictionless surface. So you can see here that it's always, regardless of the orientation of the supporting beam, the force will always be perpendicular to the surface of the beam because it is frictionless. And if I have like a pin and a guide slot right here, then again, if it's frictionless, we know that the force must be perpendicular to the surface, like this. And so here is the next four sets of connections between beams and their supporting structures. Cables and short links, they act in the same direction as the cable and the link. When we have frictionless collars or frictionless slots, the force are always perpendicular to the surface they're in contact with. So you can see that would then be the direction associated with it. And that's how we know the direction of the forces at those connecting points.